Hello and welcome to a new, well, we're going to call this Debbie's Dots. And I hope you're going to enjoy this. Um, I'm going to be throwing out dots to you. Dots that I've joined and I, want, I would really like your feedback. Do any of you watching remember seeing a film called Coma back in 1978? I watched it and it troubled me then. This is a film that had Michael Crichton in it, Genevieve Bourgeois, Richard Widmark, big cast. And as you can see here, it was introduced as imagine your life hangs by a thread. Imagine your body hangs by a wire. Imagine you're not imagining. For those of you that didn't see Coma, it was about people that were going into operating theatres and basically they weren't coming out. They were disappearing, they were dead, dying. But in reality, a doctor picked up that patients in a certain theatre, they weren't receiving the gases that they should have been receiving in the operating theatre and they were being declared dead. But where were their bodies going? Their bodies were going to an institute and being held in suspended animation until such time as the organs were needed. There's a little two minute trailer on YouTube you might want to go and have a look at. And that's the theme for today because we're gonna be looking at not science fiction, but science fact. And bear in mind that coma was 1978. So let's spring forward because many of you will have seen this document before. I've brought it up before, the Ministry of Defence, a human augmentation, the dawn of a new paradigm, smart soldiers, exoskeletons, transhumanism perhaps, merging robotics, machinery and equipment with people. It's real, everybody. And transhumanism, as we've all been talking about transgender for many years now, and it's a big agenda, transgender, are we forgetting that actually the agenda is transhumanism? And here you see in The Guardian, no death and enhanced life is the future transhuman. It may interest you actually to go and see a little snippet that Jared Kushner, President Trump's son-in-law, put out stating that he hoped that he would be the first generation not to die. Many of the globalists that you've heard of, Sam Altman, Peter Thiel, Elon Musk, are all transhumanists. They embrace merging man with machine. Here in the MIT Technology Review, this paper, ethically sourced spare human bodies could revolutionise medicine. Yes, everybody, this is real. So we're using animated cadavers of people who have been declared legally dead and who have lost all brain function. In all these cases, this article says, nothing was legally a living human being at the time it was used for research. And human bodyoids, artificial bodies without brains, would be classified in the same way. It's a very deep, dark subject with huge, huge ethical discussions and debates to be had. But let's move on because this is a reality and this article in the mirror, scientists want to grow spare humans dubbed bodyoids to help make meat and medicine. Yes, you heard, meat and medicine. And if we look at what makes somebody legally dead we go back to looking at brainstem death. And here is just one paper, JAMA, a determination of brain death, death by neurologic criteria. What do doctors have to do? What classifies brain death? And here you clearly see that if there is no evidence of arousal or awareness to maximal external stimulation, including noxious visual, auditory and tactile stimulation, that's number one. Number two, are the pupils fixed in a mid-size or dilated position? Number three, corneal and oculovestibular reflexes are absent. Number four, there are no facial movements to noxious stimulation. Number five, the gag reflex is absent 
to bilateral posterior pharyngeal stimulation. Six, the cough reflex is absent to deep tracheal suctioning. Seven, there is no brain mediated motor response to noxious stimulation of the limbs. Eight, spontaneous respirations are not observed when apnea test targets reach the specific limits. Special consideration is needed for children. That is what, that is the criteria that doctors use to say if someone is brain dead. Now if someone is in coma, the doctors will use the Glasgow Coma Scale and here you can see, you can please just go and join these dots yourself. But this is the Glasgow structured approach for, to assessment of the Glasgow Coma Scale. They're looking at eye opening, verbal responses and motor responses. Coma is a very, very deep state of unconsciousness. And as you know previously in 7-7, seven, seven, seven stories in seven minutes, we've talked about a young man who was in coma for four months and then woke up. Are we going to be given that chance now? What is coma? Have you heard of xenotransplantation? So the next slide is a trigger warning, really. I prefer people perhaps watch this on your own, not with children, from here on in. So here in science, you see that this person was declared legally dead. And as such, surgeons and researchers and doctors decided that this was a person that they could experiment on. So whilst this person was declared legally dead, they decided to transplant pig lungs to see how long that person would breathe for with a ventilator. Sadly, not long. This is what we're heading for. Xenotransplantation. Mixing animal organs with human organs. But it doesn't always work out well. And here, just recently, actually, this story appeared on Sky of this lady who was infected with an incurable brain disease due to an NHS operation. When she was three years old, she had spina bifida. And the doctors told her mum that there was a miraculous cure. So they went for it, like most mums would, right? But unknown to mum at the time, the procedures that they were talking about involved taking membrane from dead bodies and transplanting it into her spinal cord. And now she's very seriously ill. We've been using dead bodies for transplantation for it seems many, many years. Coma comes in two forms. There's also induced coma. And I just want you to look at this wiki page here which clearly says that coma is a temporary coma, a deep state of unconsciousness brought on by controlled doses of an anaesthetic drug, often a barbiturate, such as pentobarbital or thiopental. But it also goes on to mention midazolam. I want to take you to Medicina Intensiva, to this paper, that talks about the current role of midazolam in sedation of the ventilated critically ill patient medazolam, putting people in comas. Now I want to take you to the House of Lords because just recently, as you know, the assisted dying bill is being read and debated in the House of Lords. And the assisted dying bill, which was put forward by Kim Ledbetter, she's put this forward and yet it is getting a bit of opposition, which I'm very pleased and relieved about. The standard here are reporting that Esther Ranson, on the very same day as the assisted dying bill was being heard in the Lords, Esther Ranson announced that she was making plans to go to Dignitas alone because she couldn't wait any longer to die. I never ever thought in a million years I would ever agree with David Lammy. However, David Lammy in The Telegraph came out and said that he feared the assisted dying bill would pressure the elderly into suicide. And I can tell you that anybody that has a life insurance policy, the insurance companies do pay out for assisted death. So that means that if your loved ones are coming up to the age where their policies are going to run out, 
are they going to feel coerced and pressured into having an assisted death? And I do believe that they may. But as I say, there is some pushback in the Lords, and here we see the Church Times, and this is Bishop Mulally, who is in very, very firm opposition of the bill passing. So we do have hope, although I'm afraid I think it's a given that the assisted dying bill will go through. And meanwhile, the adult care sector, here you can see an article in the carer, they're saying they can't cope with it. They're totally unprepared. They're totally unprepared for this terminally ill adults bill. And then when you look a little bit deeper, as I did, on the white are reporting that palliative care experts are warning of dire consequences if this goes ahead. In fact, they're actually saying that they believe that people will potentially die badly. Now this all leads on to something even more sinister. It leads on to body farms. We're talking transhumanism, we're talking organ transplantation, we're talking transplantation into dead bodies, we're talking are we storing bodies that are said to be brain dead? How do we know they're brain dead? How does anyone know? Only God knows, right? So these are all the things we're talking about and now I'm going to take you to a body farm. Do you know what a body farm is? So a body farm is a place where mainly for forensics and police investigations they put bodies in fields and they see how long they take to decompose to rot what effect they'll have on the land if those bodies were diseased what effect will that have on the soil today there are seven body farms in the united states and the one in texas quite frankly is absolutely huge it's 26 acres but there are also body farms in canada Britain, India and Australia and are not quite in Britain. Not quite. However, as you can see from this BBC article, does the UK need a body farm, a human body farm? And this is called taphonomy. New words, right? Taphonomy. And they're saying that actually we do. We do need a body farm in this country. We need to throw bodies out onto fields and see what happens when they decompose. The University of Huddersfield are campaigning for this. And as you can see here from the Association of Anatomical Pathology Technology, the UK, as of 7th of May 2019, was advertising to open the first body farm for forensic research. And moving on in the metro here, in 2018, they were actually advertising for volunteers, volunteer corpses to put into fields to decompose. It's a bit of a death cult that we seem to be living in, isn't it? Even Ed Miliband has gotten onto the bandwagon, so he says that funerals should comply with net zero. How are we going to do that, you ask yourself? Well, we're going to be looking at eco-friendly wicker or bamboo coffins, but not just that. We're going to be looking at a different way to dispose the bodies that we don't want. Aquamation. Aquamation is the water-based alternative. It's meant to be gentle and it's meant to be respectful. It's meant to be the way forward. I don't see it as a way forward. I see that there could be a very sinister agenda at play. How many people are being declared brain dead? I don't know the answer to that question. Do you? How many people are having organs transplanted or taken, harvested, when they probably didn't want that? They haven't signed their driving license, they haven't opted out. What are organs being used for? They're not just being used for live people, kidney transplants. They're being used for experimentation. They're being put into dead bodies. Are you aware of the organ transplantation harvesting industry? If you're not, perhaps you should be. Are we living in a time where some people who are being declared brain dead perhaps aren't? Perhaps they're having experiments carried out on them without the knowledge of their loved ones. Do you know what's happening? I don't. 
but I have an awful lot of suspicions. The funeral industry, the death industry, the dying industry is extremely dark. And I'm just throwing these dots out to you because there are a lot of sick people at the moment. And there's a lot of diseased organs out there at the moment. And clinical trials are experiments. We are in the middle of one big experiment. And please remember that the United Kingdom appears to be the global life science laboratory of the world. Sobering thought when you and me are the lab rats. So let me know what you think about my Debbie's Dots. There's more to come, more Debbie's Dots on different subjects. And I'm sorry that this is a bit of a grim subject, but perhaps it's one we need to talk about. And I know that all of you watching, you'll have something to say, and please say it. I'm open to the feedback. I really want to know more and if you do know more and you're watching and you're thinking yeah this is ringing some bells please get in contact it's a discussion we need to have and in the meantime I'm going to get ready for the next Debbie's Dots and the next 7-7 and I want to thank you for watching thank you for listening if you like please share hit the subscribe button and the like button and don't forget however gloomy things get don't be all doom and gloom keep smiling.